live from Boston, Massachusetts. It's The Q at the HP Vertica Big Data Conference 2014. Brought to you by HP. With your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back. And when we're here live in Boston, Massachusetts for Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program, we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of Silicon Angle. And I'm here with uh, two distinguished engineers from Zynga, Yoko Yamazaki, general manager of analytics, head of analytics at Zynga, and Joanne Ho, engineering manager at Zynga. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. We do out to the events, we get the live, live action. It's like a ESPN of tech, some say, but we go out and talk to all the tech athletes. And uh, we love gaming because gaming is real time, loyal audience, and if something's wrong, you didn't know about it because you either <laughs> get angry flame mail or you'll lose customers, right? Yeah. So data is critical. So I got to ask the first question as head of analytics, how did, what's your world like? I mean, what, do you, <laughs> what goes on? I mean, what's the strategy? To collect everything? Give us a quick overview of what you guys are, how you guys approach the data given the yeah. gaming market. You know, it's uh, so our our team, analytics team, has been here for five years now. Um, it's actually not as challenging as it sounds like. <laughs> we've got the schema, we've got the database, we've got end-to-end -end, um, service, you know, visualization, experiment, just like everything is already set up that we, and in the way that we set it up, we can actually launch as many games as company wants and we don't have to change anything. So, so it's actually not that like, crazy difficult. So horizontally scalable, but yeah. you can but you can repurpose for new games. Yep. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And there's scale's no, been no problem at all? No problem at all. And uh, there's no tables, additional tables, schemas, technology that we have to build for a uh, new game. That's fantastic. So, so yeah. okay, so which just gets us on the record. Uh, it's an easy job and everything's <laughs> working great. It's scaling beautifully. Um, what are you doing on your free time? Sailing <laughs> in the bay? What's Joanne? Come on, what's going on? You're in the you're in the trenches. What's what's the day to day like for you? Well, I manage the uh, Vertica database in Zynga, and also in charge of the ETL process. So um, we deal with a lot of um, data, day in day day out. Um, one thing that I want to echo about from Yuko um, comment earlier is that we actually standardize our taxonomy for all games across games. So uh, for critical data, we have a set of standardized taxonomy, and then as a, tier, a first tier, and then we also let game to lock their own game-specific um, tracking into our vertical database. So we load all the uh, game activities, user activities, into our vertical database, and we can do analyzations at a later time. So standardization seems to be a big theme these days. So first question: How much data can you share? Data volumes? with us and sounds like, uh, I mean, I can imagine it must be massive. What's the, kind of some of the numbers? Uh, in average, we load about 50 billion records per day. Yeah. B, billion. 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 Okay, B. billion, that's a lot. Okay, so we got a lot of records. Uh, petabytes, any kind of petabyte numbers? Is it not a big data, is it little data, or is it just transactional? Um, it's more, somewhere like a transactional data. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The entire database is about 500 terabytes. Compressed. Compressed. Okay, with so about it's eight not nine. hugely like, you know, big volume, but a lot of activity. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I think uh, the one of the biggest success stories for us is we are allowing them to, we, we have PMs, product managers, and engineers to decide what they want to analyze first. Mm -hmm. So that really creates the, the data culture and they start thinking about what is it that we need to log for us to be able to analyze and move the business value. So we don't just capture everything that happens and then decide, we let them decide first yeah. and then collect what makes sense. So they're like the data wranglers. They set the, they set the agenda yep. for the data strategies yep. mm -hmm. because they're thinking about the product in mind. Yep. User experience, feedback, interaction, all the above, so they kind of look yep. at the data yep. from that all perspective. The above, yep. mm -hmm. So okay. starting from a game design, they're starting to think about like what is it that we need to collect the data, what is it that we need to analyze and so forth, so yeah. 
So the taxonomy sounds like a big innovation. When did that come about? So what, how did that happen? Just you saying, hey, we're pulling our hair out. It's, uh, we're hacking our way to success. We have to do something. Was it a redesign? Was it more thinking about the future? How did we get to the standard taxonomy? Give some color, uh, some detail around that, that whole decision. Yeah, so um, the base of like we call tier one standardization of taxonomies, that's been developed a long time ago. And the data has been collected from every single game for those data. Um, but as, as we notice any success with a particular metric that a product team has, um, has logged that makes sense to standardize, we continue to improve that. What's the biggest challenge looking back now? You're smiling, you're feeling good, um, you're happy. Because not a lot of people have standards that text on. You guys are really ahead of the curve. What was the biggest challenge you found getting here? Because there's a lot of pressure. The games are, are significant. You, there's a lot of things going on, user accounts and whatnot, and you want to stay successful. So what was the biggest challenge? I think to me, I think, um, so as I mentioned about, we allow anyone to see the data. We allow anyone to do anything with the data. That does create sometimes a challenge of um, not um, experiment not being set up correctly or um, a particular PM saying this is what's been done from this experiment versus that actually wasn't the right way, for example. So it does create a little bit of uh, um, um, not being perfect in terms of the data that's been um, you know, measured, for example. What's the um, philosophy on the data? Because we were, I asked in the, uh, the VP of Engineering at Vertica, Shilba, I said, what, I said, what should we think about first, the data or the database? The old days when, when, uh, you know, when we were doing database work, it was got to get the database. Once we decide the database, then we can move to the next step. Now it's, it's a different issue. Unstructured mm -hmm. data is a big part of it. Schemas mm -hmm. are great to have that in place, but you got to deal with the structured and unstructured data. How do you guys uh, deal with that? Um, so I think um, first we need to look at our um, use cases, understanding the business requirement first, and then we will design the data that we want to track, and then we can decide on the taxonomy, like the schema, mm -hmm. uh, later on. Yeah. But for most of the uh, Zynga data that we log, we are pretty uh, uh, in a structure format. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So talk about your team. How big is the team? Where are you guys located? San Francisco, obviously yep. the headquarters in, is in SF. Yeah. Um, anywhere else, other places? You guys have your core team there. How big is it? Can yeah, you share I think so? um, most of the employees are in uh, headquarters. In San Francisco. Yeah. What's the culture like? Are they data nerds? Are they geeks? Are they getting in the data? I mean, I mean, it's a data conference. We're all data geeks. Mm -hmm. what's, yeah. What's the culture like? People have like big data hackathons, or is there? What do you guys? I mean, I think is a really uh, dynamic company. So what's it like there? Yeah, definitely very, very data-driven culture. Mm -hmm. So even product managers are very technical. They understand data. They understand how to set up experiments, how to make personalized personalized game using data. So yeah, it's definitely a data geek. So I have to <laughs> ask you ladies something because this has really kind of been something we talked about yesterday is growth hacking. Um, well, we talked about the product CEO kind of role, the, the role of product manager, really important. But growth hacking has become a big part of social, online stuff. Data plays a big role in growth hacking. Uh, to do it right, growth hacking is a dangerous game because if if you growth hack and you make users angry, you actually can backfire. Yeah. So there's been a lot of companies that have done it wrong and right. Some have done it really extremely well, elegantly. Some have failed. A-B testing seems to be weird. So how do you look at the data aspect to do growth hacking, right? Meaning growth hacking to get more users in a way that's elegant and relevant. What's your take on that as analytics? Do you guys have a formula? Do you have an opinion on this? No? So something <laughs> that we, uh, we developed um, in the past is uh, some personalization model to enhance uh, user experience. Uh, one of the really good uh, model that we have developed is, is how, uh, how to install, uh, how to increase the install of game, new games. So we, uh, we look at the current user's playing pattern. We took a uh, look at like 10 metrics of the current user, for example, uh, user's engagement or uh, the payment so you can see the fatigue patterns, you can see yeah. users that are on the brink of maybe yeah, um, kind of bored, maybe an incentive. Yeah, we also also look at uh, your friends' playing pattern so that we can predict uh, uh, how likely you'll be install that game. 
so then we will um, introduce uh, a game that you'll be interested in. Yeah, so social graph stuff around yes. the games mm -hmm. and, and overlays on yeah. that. Affinity data mm -hmm. between certain features too as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay, so we're cool. very focused on uh, uh, user satisfactions and how to enhance your experience while playing our games. Well, I think you guys are awesome. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. I want to ask you one last question, but Zynga is a great company. been following the, the, the success, the rise. I was there when Mark Pincus was, uh, this is Gnome Dex, is like 2000 and something. He was just started doing the uh, Texas Hold'em. And then I heard him talking about it. I was like riffing on and then it became such a huge success. Congratulations. But you had a lot of chances to do some, do some things from a clean sheet of paper. So I want to ask you a final question, each of you to share. Something that we don't know about Zynga that you that surprised you with the data. Something that's happened with the game that was data driven, that was an aha, something that surprised you that was positive, that was really a, an aha moment for you guys. Share an experience that you had. Yeah, so we've launched a lot of games in the last five years and um, we definitely have noticed using the data that people, it's, there is a pattern from one game to another. It's not like, you know, only this only happens in this particular game. I mean, there are a lot of things that we can repeat as a success. Um, so our central analytics has been a success with that. I think there's a lot of um, learnings that you can get from one to another that uh, we continue to improve. Joanne, anything that surprised you that you didn't expect to come out of the data with the, around the games? Well, I think one, one thing that I'm very proud of for my company is that we we standardizing um, how to lock our data into one centralized place, which is very easy to manage. And also we can increase adoptions across the company, which is a really good thing. And also position yourself for de deploying new games. Yes. Without rebuilding, tooling. Up. Yeah, and it's a, <laughs> because we have a centralized place um, of, the, of the storing a data, and then user can access the same data. They can even look at other games data to, to see, you know, to cross train each other or even new game, they can just learn from existing successful games also. You guys are awesome. We can come on theCUBE anytime. We have our Palo Alto office. Uh, we have CUBE conversations anytime you guys want to explore more. Love to drill down. Yoko Joanne, thank you very much for coming on theCUBE. This is theCUBE talking about analytics from the, from the leaders at Zynga who have created a great model. Standardized taxonomy, uh, rebuilding capabilities with new games, and uh, just awesome, awesome analytics. So thanks for joining us. You're this welcome, is theCUBE, we'll be right back live in Boston after this short break. <laughs>